Hello, Salt Frog Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds, back again. Got my bro, Luker. What's up, dude? Not much. I'm actually fixing my name in a little corner down below. So now I'm officially Luke Simons. So back in business. While you're doing that, your whole Zoom's freezing up on me here, dude. You're slower than a turtle. That's not good. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So we're talking about smart fishing system. A lot of you Insider members already know what this is. Some of you might not. We we have put together so many awesome things over the years. Uh, I can understand why some members come in and say, wow, like I had no idea you guys had all of this here. Uh, and, and also, honestly, it could it could lead to overwhelm if you don't know where to find stuff. If you haven't been in to saltstrom.com, you got to be logged in, obviously, to see what I think Luke's about to share. But this is our new dashboard. It, it It's pretty bland right now. We, we literally went from like having stuff everywhere to you know having it pretty simple so it will it look maybe a little bit different depending on when you see this uh but we've made it this simple where everything it kind of looks like you know app icons on your phone uh these are the main things based on our members clicking on stuff because we you know we have the little uh what's it called heat maps where we get to see what people are clicking on the most these are the things that members are most interested in the things they're using the most and uh, and a lot of these first ones tie in to this smart fishing system. So we're not going to cover every little thing on here. We're really going to cover the system, which is smart fishing tides, which also has the strike score and shows you the best day and time of day to fish based on any area, basically any tide station in America, really. Then smart fishing spots, which is right next to it. Boo, yeah. And then the smart fishing game plans, which are right below it. And then the community, which kind of is the super glue that holds all of this stuff in together. And there's the spots map as well. That's really just a conglomerate of all these spots. So uh, the other piece of good news is we are working with a UX professional, like an expert uh, that we have hired on board for like the next year, uh, just to bring all this stuff in together, to simplify it, to consolidate some things and make it even easier. But as it stands right now, oh my gosh, this is so much cleaner and, uh, and we'll kind of cover each one. So smart fishing system, Luke, you want to start with smart fishing tides? Cause that was the first kind of software app that we developed. Yeah. So all these are, are somewhat related. They are, they all help you catch more fish and the tides is really, this is what I use before every trip. And let me go ahead and, uh, go in down to Tampa, Florida, assuming I'm going to fish down, uh, down this way. And so just like, you know, most tide tied up see a lot of tide stations the the cool thing about this each one of these has is different tide station cool thing about this system is that it it's really specialized for inshore saltwater anglers going after redfish sea trout snook flounder that's really why um, at least there's a lot of uh, of the fish strike and feeding behavior patterns ingrained at this where we have daily scores it's called the strike score so every day has a score and it's really uh, it's really involving the the upcoming weather, right? The season that we're in, as well as the weather that we're going through. So, like during the winter period, if there's a four day time or a, a multiple day sequence of warming weather, that's a good thing. It's going to bump up the score. And then if the wind's really high, or the wind's really too high, or even too weak, that's going to fluctuate the score as well. So it, it basically just pulls in all the factors that really count, and and based on the season, it weights the different factors appropriately. And it spits out a score so that if you're if you're busy and say a weekend's coming up and you only have to, you only have one of those possible uh, two days you can fish, then it, now you can just go with the one that has the highest strike score. So the the ultimate goal is just to make your life easier. And at a quick glance, you'll automatically know. Okay, I need to I need to free up time on Sunday because it's a seven point two. Yep, and so, ten ten being the highest, one being the lowest. Yep, and it goes out to fourteen days. And it, if you're wondering, hey, what's the algorithm? Well, it's top secret. This is like this is probably uh, more top secret than even the KFC recipe. We have it locked up under multiple things, and only one person at a time knows each lock. And you know, if someone gets killed, there's rules. <laughs> it's really wild. Um, yeah. But no, we did work a long a long time on this, and um, and we continually, you know, we're trying to make it make it even uh, more accurate. It is pretty doggone awesome. And uh, the good news is you can still catch fish at any given time, but 
if you're anything like me, you want to have an advantage and know, all right, just based on everything from the, from the moon phase and from just what's happened historically in the wind direction. And like Luke said, even just the temperature, cause we're bringing all these variables in like every 15 or so minutes, uh, which is why this thing can change from my day to day. I, I, I want to know the best day and give me the best absolute advantage. And then we even at the bottom, I don't know if you're waiting to talk about that, but the, it's got the, 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 the hourly feeding time as well, not just the daytime. Yeah, waiting for you to pipe down, but uh, yeah, just, oh, pipe just down a, there, Susan. <laughs> just a quick, just a quick sanity check, right? It's all based on on current. At least a big part of it is based on current flow in addition to the weather. And just a quick sanity check, right? That we have the new moon on the twenty first, and it's not a coincidence that that has a, a higher strike score because that that's going to be when the currents are optimized. And as long as there's not a weird, uh, a, I should say, a negative behavior pattern that's almost always going to be the, the top score but again as the weather patterns change these scores will change too and as joe mentioned it's every 15 minutes it gets updated so it's uh it's very it's basically as accurate as you can get it's not like one of those printout tide charts that we that we used to use for many years that all it does is give you a static graph that's again that's helpful but if you don't see the weather and everything else along with it you're just um you're just at a big disadvantage. So on, in addition to the daily strike score is now an hourly feeding projection. And it's the same thing, right? It's based on the, the, the recent trends, right? What has been happening recently, but also in the, you know, certain seasons, twilight has a big bump up, which in this case, it's already started. Plus there's going to be some other factors. The fact that we have these two bars that are really high, um, that's going to be, again, that's some nice current flow going on along with, uh, with ideal weather, and then you can basically see again throughout the day when it's going to get good or bad, I should say better or worse. Um, and just like everything, right, this isn't pure science. There's this is more, uh, I guess, relative, right? So uh, some people are like, oh, uh, it's a, it's an eight versus a five. Oh, man, I need to go with eight. No, okay. There, there's still going to be fish feeding throughout the entire day. It's just some parts of the day are, are, are statistically going to be better than others. And that's really what this chart highlights. So that if you only have a two or three hour window to fish within, within three seconds, you can see which, which window you need to aim for. And are, can you share with me the proprietary formula? No way. That was a test. I was making sure. <laughs> Jeez, I only have to go to the back to the rules. All right. What happens if I kill Luke over this? Cause he shared it publicly. So, and right. so, and so there's, there's radar in here as well, right? We can see what the clouds are doing. This is actually pretty, uh, pretty good day out here today. So there's nothing going on. And then uh, to see any nearby spots, right? If we're trying to say, okay, I need to, I'm thinking about going to this one or how about this one further up in the bay? What's the, you know, what's it going to be like up at this, uh, this St. Petersburg station? Same thing, right? Click it. It'll do the number crunching. It'll pop in the chart. And then we can see you know, how the, the scores fluctuate for that area as well as the, you know, the feeding trend. So it is interesting. This, this area, the, the current flow hits a little bit later. So we saw the spike that was earlier uh, for the hourly feeding trend in this case is now a little bit later. So, so as you see, it, it looks at the, the actual data for every point, every place. It pulls in the tides for this location as well as the weather for this specific location and then puts it all together, kicks it through the algorithm, and here is the result. Cool. Um, so a lot of people think, well, man, this is all I need, right? No, it's just like only knowing how to throw one punch, like a, a jab in boxing. You need to have a hook, an uppercut. You need to know some more stuff. So smart fishing tides is really just step one or piece one of this system. That This is what we're doing, just so you guys know. This is what our coaches are going through and obviously we get quicker at doing this as you, uh, you do it and you can hit the stuff and do it in just a couple minutes. Uh, the next one is smart fishing spots. So that's there up at the top of the dashboard. If you're listening, just know that Luke is looking at this really nice, clean dashboard and smart fishing spot. So to, oh, we got to fix that. It took you to the community first, huh? Yeah, that was, uh, okay. Miss, uh, miss did that one. So yeah, this is smart fishing spots. This is, this is really this is the the most amazing part of the whole system. It's the most complex as well. So we're working with uh, the user experience expert to to make it all more seamless. But this for anybody who is at least somewhat interested in map reading and and just going out and finding the best spots really fast, this thing is absolutely amazing. So what what should we hit on first there, Joe? 
Well, let's zoom into just an area. And I mean, those, those filters and the, or layers, whatever we want to call them are pretty doggone cool. All right. So let's, I'll just go through, if I was going to go out fishing, what I'll go through my sequence of events and Joe, uh, let me know if I, if I miss anything. So yeah. what, what this starts with is windy where you can see what the wind's doing and that's cool. But the, the power of this is the layers, the map layers there just, as we know, if you've used satellite satellite imagery it's just amazing how much data we can gather from satellite imagery for inshore saltwater fishing a lot of the biggest fish are up in some of the shallowest water and for those of us who can just you know get on a satellite map and zoom in and find the good spots we have a huge advantage where we can find good spots from the comfort of our own house versus having to spend hours or days weeks years on the water having to find the spots the hard way and so here is a situation that oftentimes comes up when we're looking at maps. If we only know Google Maps and we and we're looking for this this spot, this is over at Fort DeSoto, we're going to be in trouble because this is just not a very good picture. The, these maps they change them uh, relatively fast. Some sometimes they do it sooner than they they don't actually announce when they're going to update their imagery. But but there's a multiple mapping platforms, and sometimes the picture just isn't very good. And so in this case, Google isn't the best. And so historically, I'd have to go over to bing.com or mapquest.com or all the other ones and try to figure out, okay, where's the good map? And here we have Bing already included. So Ooh, much better. The first one looks like Elon Musk took the picture out of his spaceship on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this first one, for those listening, there's cloud cover on here. Really wasn't the best picture. And so without moving, right, we can just quickly go to a different layer, a different image from the exact same spot. There was no pans or anything involved. And now we can see what is a much more clear picture of the spot. So not only do we have Google and Bing in here, we also have, this is, a, it's called the high res. This is, this is oh, almost always. Oh, snap. So, so this is the one I actually use most of the time because it's like 99% the best, uh, the best map where we went from, again, just for those watching, we went from can't really see much at all <laughs> to simply going to this high res, which is a proprietary uh, mapping layer to be able to see, we can see everything. Even at this high high level, we can see the troughs. We can see this uh, some nice holes in the flat. Um, it's awesome. We can see that. And the zoom yeah. level on this is sick. Like you, you can buy this just so you know, and it's hundreds of dollars just for like like a state. Uh, we obviously have this on every state, and it's all part of our smart fishing spots. Oh my god, L Lucas Zoom! If you guys are listening, you have to watch this. I mean, you can zoom in. There are areas you can see fish. I mean, the, the zoom on here is absolutely nuts. And this is what, what you would call 4K satellite view. It is yeah, so, so cool. So the, the clarity here is insane. And so once you get skilled and, and those, uh, I'm sure a lot of you watching are like, oh man, I want to fish that oyster bar. So for those who are used to seeing maps, you can actually see the difference between oysters and seagrass. And in case you're, you're a little bit new to map reading, when you see little little circular areas like this coming out of mangroves it's almost always oysters and and uh and another amazing to me this is the one of the coolest things about this whole platform is that we have a layer for oysters and let me let me move this picture out of the way there so i can let me zoom out again so one way to find oysters is to do it the hard way or like the hardest way is to actually go on the water to find them <laughs> the easier way is to use these satellite maps and and, and get skilled at finding these oysters on the maps, especially if you have a, a, a high res photo, the easiest way is you know smart fishing spots and click the oyster bed layer. Here, when I click it, it literally puts it literally puts big white outline on all the oysters. And if you're fishing in areas like Tampa Bay, if you can find a grass flat that has oysters on it, especially if there's mangroves near there the odds of not catching redfish in that spot is pretty small. Like redfish, absolutely, and snook really for that matter, and trout, that they just gravitate toward that type of area. That's that's awesome structure. There's going to be a lot of food there. Also, it's great protection from dolphin, because you know, dolphin don't want to rub their, their skin up against the, the sharp cell, shells. So it's great for protection for themselves. Also, a great place to get food, and they'll spend a lot of time there. And so not coincidentally, right, I've fished these areas a lot and I plucked out a lot of fish there. So as we zoom in, right, all those spots that we talked about seeing the oysters, 
show up glaringly and then hear some we didn't even notice, right? We might not even notice those had we had it not been for that oyster layer. So this has been the, the quickest cheat sheet that I've ever found for consistently finding good spots from the comfort of your home. But wait, uh, like, there's more. Wait, there's more. So for inshore anglers, that is right. That is, it's really hard to top that. Yeah. Obviously for, if you're a paddle angler and you want to launch at a certain location, we have a lot of routes. Oh, wait, hey, wait, 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 Go, what? I, 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 you're killing me here. There's more layers. You you hardly even showed any of them. Oh yeah. For me, the oyster ones uh, tired me, but uh, yeah, I forgot. I'm uh, so pumped. Seagrass, smart spots. Uh, the, I mean, how this whole thing got its name? Come on. Yeah. I didn't know if we want to actually show smart spots on because the smart we spot, show it real quick. We're just gonna turn it on and off real quick. Right. So, so the seagrass. This obviously won't show every bit of seagrass, but when you when you hit the seagrass layer, it'll it'll make sure that you know the areas that do have a lot of seagrass. So here you can see, obviously, it's patchy, and and we can clearly see there's a lot of seagrass here. This is this is extremely helpful. I use this uh, mostly down in the Everglades, where going down to like ten thousand islands, the water usually has a lot of silt in it. And so it's just tougher to see the grass on the bottom. And so I click this and now I know exactly where the oysters and the grass are. And that is, again, the, one of the quickest shortcuts ever to finding the fish. So the other thing, which I guess we'll just toggle this on and off real quick. This is, it's called smart spots. And this is really where the system shows you what, what we showed before is, is do it yourself, right? So if you want to go out and just find a spot by yourself, which is my personal preference, I, I prefer it just, it's just more fun and rewarding when, with your own knowledge, you go out there, you find a spot, and you go out there and catch fish at it is awesome. Especially when you find a spot from your, from the comfort of your own home, it's pretty cool. Uh, the done for you system is called Smart Spots, where you actually click this, and it'll actually highlight spots that are most likely going to be holding some good fish at that time. So it's actually smart based on the season, based on the weather, based on the tides, and here you go. So. This whole area is a is obviously a, a good a, a great area. All right, turn it off. You've shown too much. Turn it right, off. Turn it off. <laughs> and so what it does, it actually oh, it's looks, back on. It's back uh, on. What uh, happened? Uh, this is so, this is a failure. So Somebody we have hacked the system. And this is a, this is a section that we're going to be updating because it is a little bit complex. Um, but it, but it's basically looking. I got to turn that off. Uh, but what it's doing is it's looking. <laughs> oh, I can't even turn it off. Uh, what it's doing is looking at the the actual weather and tides for that particular area at that particular time and it has this uh, this down at the bottom this this tracker this is the the hourly tracker and so you can basically go from i, don't, I think it goes out a couple days uh, but you can go and just and just track further down in time and what you'll see is those spots the top spots will be fluctuating based on how the current flow is hitting it based on if there's a storm approaching um, you know, based on a variety of situations, if there's, yeah, again, uh, it's, it's mostly the biggest impact, obviously, is weather and tides. And so it'll basically go through and just point out the areas that are most likely going to have the most feeding fish. And so, again, for somebody a little bit newer or going to an area you've never been to before, this is, again, it's just such a good um, a, a good just foundation for knowing which areas to go to yeah and then a couple other ones we got to highlight i'm just you know it's got sonar i mean this is something that you know uh if you hit marine chart luke so yeah marine chart the depth i mean that's really cool yeah so this gives the sonar and, and again another thing it shows the channel markers which i like as well I, I just came down from or came back from a trip down everglades and so i was able to see where the channels were where, where the main channels were just simply by looking for the channel markers, obviously you can see the depths in certain areas. Um, for for Tampa Bay, like, honestly, the the satellite view, the high res, is, is really better for the depths because you can actually see detail on exactly where the channels are and where the grass is. So this isn't you know the, the marine chart isn't something I personally use every day, but it's it's here for especially when traveling. Or uh, again, I know a lot of members in Northeast Florida, you know, rely on this heavily because it shows all the details. Um, my personal favorite for, I was actually doing this earlier today, is for going out and, and fishing reefs, whether it's inshore reefs or nearshore reefs, is this shaded relief. In and real quick, why, why it uses this in Texas, where he's got a little bit murkier water inshore, he'll click the shaded relief, which is the 3D, and he'll click sonar, 
and he's looking for little areas that are that have deep spots near like creek mouths it's really cool yeah. uh, he, he was showing me how he's using that i was like dude that is sick so let me just show you how this is if you're doing near shore reef fishing this is just absolutely amazing um let me see if this is oh, that's the wrong one so we go out and what this is this is high def bottom imagery of the bottom not 100 you know it's not 100 of the bottom it's basically wherever we've been able to get that data but but most of the public reefs are in here and there's also a lot of the inshore shipping channels and the passes like Boca grand pass um you know this pass here in uh, in tampa but this is where i personally just have been blown away by I, I'm, I'm i'm relatively new to near shore reef fishing and this has given me the biggest leg up on really everybody else because I can go out there and I can access this from my phone. So this is one of the reefs where where I can still access the uh, the internet, and I can literally see on my on the phone. I can see and zoom in to see these like these are actually tanks. This is just a lot of stuff that's been sunk down the bottom. You can see you literally can see the actual tanks when we zoom in. You can that's see crazy. the pilings. Uh, this was like a barge or something. This is something bigger. And I can get here. And this is, again, this is just the coolest thing ever. From from the comfort of my home, I can go and create a route or or just do waypoints and add each of these tanks if I want to. Or I can make a, a point there. I can make a point there. I can start going through all these. Let me, let me get that off there because now it's bugging me. But I can, I can basically click on the, each of these items capture the gps location from it and then import it into uh, export onto a card and import it into the boat's gps unit which is cool but the easiest way is just to pick the phone up and see this map on my phone along with the little icon of where i am so it's uh, it's just it's awesome and so this has helped me significantly go out and have just really good days out on the reefs where i really am not very skilled at like i don't have I, I haven't spent much time out there, but the time has been awesome. I got in some amazing Kobe action, grouper, you know, snook. It's just, it's been, I saw a giant permit school uh, the other time out. It was, it was just, just so much fun. So it's kind of like the, the, the thing I've been learning. I've just been using the system just to make it a whole lot easier. Yeah. You can just, you, I mean, heck, we've only been doing this for what, 18, 20 minutes and who knows how many spots we've already just looked at and uncovered. It's amazing what you could find. And so this, uh, this is really step number two, right? Of this system, which is the smart fishing spots. So we got the tides, the spots, and all these different layers. There's, there's a whole lot more to this. We're only just showing the, the things that kind of excite people here. What do you got? Something else to show? Yeah. So it also has the reefs, right? So anybody into the near shore reef fishing or even inshore reefs, where you can see the different reefs that are uh, that are out that that is basically logged by uh, really by FWC and pretty awesome and again most of these reefs you can zoom into let me just sometimes it takes a little bit of a walk there's a ton of pixels related to all this stuff but you can zoom into these reefs and then get into that high def imagery on the bottom for most of them this is just taking slower than usual because i'm running this zoom platform as well yeah so cool all Let's right so it. the next one we'll move on is the smart fishing game plans so what you've seen so far is a, a little bit of artificial intelligence, right? We've built out algorithms and these proprietary uh, uh, kind of filters, if you will, to, to help show the best day and time and tide and even spots to fish. And then the smart fishing game plans is guys like Luke and other fishing coaches. Now we've got, I don't know, 50 or so full-time guides who are now every week reporting what's happened in their area, like right as soon as you get off the water. I mean, how cool is that? They're literally usually calling, you know, into our little hotline on the way home from being on the water all week saying, Hey guys, here's exactly what I'm seeing in my area. So now we've got the human intelligence to back up all of this artificial intelligence. And uh, man, with these things, these three things combined, you will have more Intel and you will be literally just going out there with confidence you know, compared to just like, man, I haven't fished in a while and I don't even know where to go. It is game changing what this does. And we have full-time guides, by the way, that pay for the same stuff, that pay for the system and use it and have no qualms and not embarrassed to say, yeah, as a full-time guide, I use this because it helps me get a, a leg up and finding some uh, new spots when things get tough. So this is so awesome. Yeah. And, and as you mentioned, you know, what we, the, the artificial intelligence is is awesome, right? It's just so much it's just a lot of just a lot of data can be 
concise and, and put together to, to take historical actuals and forecast what is likely to happen. Very, very cool. You know, just knowing what's going to happen based on history. But but if, if we only look at that, we're missing a, a very important part of it. And that's just the human intelligence, which is the real time what's happening now. Um, and I personally have done way better just just having a good network of anglers that I, that I, you know, that I either have fished with or I'm just friends with and not everybody can fish every day. Right. We wish we wish we could, but never can. And so then just having somebody to talk with, Hey, what was happening in your last trip or, or what do we, you know, what's been happening lately, that information on what happened one or two days ago is way more important and way more, more valuable than, than looking back at like, you know, historical, historical actuals two two to five years ago, right during that same time so this human intelligence is, is is just crucial i've had some of my best days simply by just going off of a tip that i that i found or saw in this community platform these game plans are are awesome as joe mentioned but also we have we have even just our members posting trips on a daily basis where we can see just real time uh real time intel on just what's happening what's biting and what they're biting on which yeah, is click that click the main map just to kind of show all the different pins from uh from us and from our members um i mean it is look at this so if, if you're just listening in just know that there's i mean 60 70 000 pin i mean it, it it's crazy every one of these pins is a fishing spot or report or spot dissection on the water report and you could filter it down which is really neat even filter it down over there on the right hand side by dates you can even yep. see the last seven days or if you hey i'm going to see everything that happened in the in the month of march or april uh it is so cool uh what you can uh do with this and uh just so much intel it's uh it's not even funny yeah so this is relatively new and even if we just look at the month of march and, and we've we've moved over obviously we've shown tampa bay that's that's where i live which is i'm, I'm biased towards but but it, we're now in uh, Northeast Florida, and even just looking for, at one month of intel, here are all the different spots and all the different reports that have that have been posted from that specific time frame for this area. Uh, many of which are th these yellow ones that are inside reports, where it actually shows an entire trip, where you have you have uh, you know the the trip details on what happened, as well as a post trip analysis, where you actually get low level Google maps and the, and the, and one of our coaches saying, here's where we were catching the fish. And most importantly, why here's why they were here, whether the, the current was going in or out hitting this bank in this particular way, going through these dock pilings in this particular way, and then how to position to maximize your results. So long story short, there's just a wealth of information in here. This does take a little bit more time to do. So a lot of people rely on, on the earlier stuff that we showed where the artificial intelligence, like smart spots, and, and the tides, but uh, for those who have just a little bit of time, each one of these these inside reports, it's usually about a ten minute video, but the the amount of information you get from them is is just absolutely amazing. It's just something that I wish, really, we we set this up just to have something that that we just wish was was available when we were learning the hard way. It's like so having a have fishing saved. guide in your back pocket. Yeah, would have would have shaved you know saved many years of frustration and just wasted money going to bad spots. Absolutely. So, so yeah, I just went back to the uh, the all dates, and you can see Jacksonville, the, the entire coastline of Florida, obviously is covered because we have uh, you know thousands and thousands of members, but even really the entire southeast. So we can scroll, scan over all the way along the Gulf, tons of spots. Get over to Texas, a whole lot of spots. Texas is uh, is growing very fast, and have a ton of members there. And and even if we pan over to the Atlantic side of the, the coastline, you know, going up Georgia, Carolinas, ton of, ton of action. You know, we've basically been blessed to have members really throughout the entire Southeast and even some up in the, uh, the Northeast yep. who have been uh, finding value in, in these platforms and, and telling their friends. And it's just been growing fast. It's been really cool. Yep. And so you might've seen in the title, it says imitation only. What does that mean? Well, we're asking you to come join saltstrong.com, but only if you are a fit. We actually did something recently that we we really kind of kicked off this whole Insider Club as an invitation only. Remember, Luke, for the first probably year and a half, two years, we did no advertising. It was we used to call it like the underground fishing club. 
and uh, where we were all just kind of, you know, sharing what's working. And back then we didn't have the tackle discounts. We didn't have any of this fancy, you know, smart fishing spots and smart fishing tides. really just a bunch of anglers that wanted to help each other out, wanted to share what was, uh, what was working. And, uh, and then the club just kept growing and growing and growing. And we opened it up to everyone. Well, we're taking it back. We're, we're now, we have 35 or about 36,000 members. And uh, now if you go to the pricing page, you'll see that you can't just join. Uh, and there's, it's for a couple of reasons. One, we don't want everyone to see all this stuff. We, we don't want this to be open where someone can just come in and just leave real quick. We're trying to make sure we get the right people, number one. And number two, if we can't help you, we do ask you a few questions like, hey, where do you fish? And you know, if you tell us that you fish in California and you only fish by land in California, we probably can't help you. Uh, you know, and so we're going to be very honest and say, hey, we're not a fit for every single person. Uh, so that is why we're asking a, a few questions. I think it's like four questions. It takes, I don't know, 35 seconds. And then you get a, a yay or nay. Hey, you're approved or you're not. And uh, it's another reason this club has continued to grow and survive through all these years and and continues to just explode uh, because we have great people and they refer great friends over and we don't allow any cursing. There's no negativity, no belittling. No, uh, no trash talking, no politics, none of that stuff in our private community. And, and we honestly want to want to keep it that way. And uh, it, it got a little out of control. We were getting so many people joining at just a rapid rate, which sounds good. Same point. We, we really do want the right people. We want people who really do want to help. They want to share. And if you're brand new, yeah, learn a lot. And then, you know, maybe you're the one that gets to share a tip that you learned with uh, with someone else new. And it is neat how many, you know, full time guides and, and really experienced anglers we've attracted and, and some that have just grown up in this awesome insider club and community that uh, came in as you know, kind of part-time weekend warriors and just fished occasionally and now are, are great. And some even have their captain's license and uh, it's been really neat to see this evolve. So if it sounds like it's a fit, come join us over at saltstrong.com. You get access to all the stuff that we shared. And if, uh, if you're already a member, thank you guys so much. Keep referring your friends over. We got these new chapters. So we're doing local chapters coming up here real soon. Really, really pumped about that. Uh, it's uh, going to be kind of our our next chapter at Salt Strong has taken everything that we've built online and taking it offline into uh you know into our little local community so i'm really pumped so uh that's all at saltstrong.com you'll see a, you know a join now or a pricing page and uh and you can find out more there if you're not a member yeah it's been cool watching it grow and, and really a, a lot of this stuff I, I, all of it's been just designed from anglers but a lot a lot of the ideas like from smart spots and and, and the different map layers that actually come from members in, in the community where it's, hey, it would be really cool if we could do this. And then, like, okay, let's let's see if we can do it. Let's try to figure it out. And and so this is just where we are now. And and just, you know, a year from now, especially two years or more from now, there's going to be way cooler stuff on there. It's just, this is just the starting point. And so we're already at a point where this stuff is, is awesome and it's only going to get better from here. So we'd certainly love to have you part of the journey if you're not already. Yep. So it's saltstrong.com. If you're a current member, make sure to go into the community. We've got some really cool giveaways, giving three more reels away this month. Uh, if you guys don't know about that and you are a member, make sure to be active in the community. If you're just active in there, participating, commenting, posting, whatever, you're automatically get entered into the giveaway. And uh, last month we gave away well over what, uh, $1,400 worth of, of spinning reels this month, doing another big one as well. So uh, make sure to be active in the private community. Otherwise, we will talk to you guys on the next episode. Peace.